So on uh, well, on a typical Grizzly, um, the setup is to have the ball, the bolts push this ball nut against the saddle and it bears right along this ground surface on the ball nut. If you remember, or if you can tell, this thing has linear rails. Um, in order to get the linear rails on here and utilize the stock saddle, the decision was made to raise the table about 150 thousandths. That 150 thousandths comes from somewhere. It comes from right here. So move the saddle or the table up. Now you have less bearing on here. So um, this nut was already cut by, I suspect the Chinese. I'm gonna use that term loosely, but uh, yeah, these were cut for like a standard dovetail uh, grizzly table. And um, I think you could avoid this by um, not cutting the ball nut flat across the top because then you would have more bearing surface. And I think it's an important place to have, you know, as much bearing surface. Remember, and this is where the nut's going to bear on the saddle casting. So we'll put the saddle casting on. It's going to bear on it right here. As you push with these two screws, you push the retainer forward and it pushes on this surface here. And this was a surface that was lacking because we raised the table. So here you'll see what's going on. This is now all of the contact area from the so it's ball nut retainer to here. So we've we've now we have total contact across here. As we push this retainer nut in and secure it to the saddle, it's contacting completely across here. Opposed to just basically grabbing, like if you could imagine you're uh, falling off a cliff and you're trying to hang on with your fingernails. That's sort of how it was before with the ball nut. Just, right. just the corner of the uh, nut was bearing on that uh, saddle. As the saddle raises up, you can see what happens. It disappears. The contact area disappears. So 150 thousands doesn't seem like a lot, but um, yeah. These things were have been ground off. There was not much of it the, there. It would have been like... Well, let's, let's take that ball nut on off and uh, show them without it. So that is... Um, that would be a typical, you know, Haas style. I'll call it Haas style. I don't really know if it is, but... Um, I call that a standard grizzly, you know, net okay, holder. Side, right? So after the rails, this is what it would have looked like. And you can see that this, yeah, the nuts bearing on there. Barely. But just barely. So here's the ball nut with the saddle removed. Aluminum. So you can see that screws come here great this is the new one it's the same idea granted it doesn't have dowel pins or pins like that this one bolts on from the other side but you can see how it basically you know it extends the top and uh, all of this has been you know reground so it's all square and uh, this is perfectly flush with that um, reference face on the ball nut. So I got the enclosure back on, just sitting on the base so it's easier to work on. Uh, I spent the day doing all of my finish welding and grinding, and then I uh, started work on the inside, as you can see. Um, yeah, those are the, that's the seam sealer on there, the Sika Flex 1A. And this, uh, this enclosure, that's the, the seams are on that end and everything else is uh, mechanically flashed like a, like you would build a, you know, a house or a roof or something, you know, sort of automotive inspired, uh, pardon the freestyle camera work, but that's how I do. Uh, you can see this. Um, this is actually flanged. I got a flanger that, um, that I did the joints with. So, um, 
the ends are the only things that have the uh, the lapped the lapped or butt joints, just due to uh, my limited amount of sheet metal equipment. Sort of got to build around my uh, tool abilities, so it's pretty cool. And then everything uh, everything that isn't the end pieces, like right there, is all uh, spot welded. Um, you know, through you could see. You can see here, mechanically flash as I'm talking about, like, um, this doesn't need steam sealer because, you know, water can't get under there. It's, you know, like flashing on a house. And same thing that goes for here, like this is the window track and um, the windows slide up and down in there. Let's see if I can get some better light. And then this is mechanically flash for the window so water can't go down the top um, but for things like this you know like on a if you're building a car you would do a seam sealer on the joints and the, that's that's what I'll do there you can see I got a little cocky with it right there that was uh, that was the first side you can see as things went along how uh, how my technique how my technique improved but yeah the Secaflex stuff is it's nice it's fun to work with it's a little messy but uh, it's supposed to be the shiznit and you can paint over it and it's durable so I have high hopes sort of got to I couldn't imagine removing all of that it'd be terrible so yeah things are looking up I think what I'll do tomorrow is, uh, it's hard to do, there's some overhead stuff, like you can see right along there, like I'll probably flip the enclosure over on the welding table and attack it. So, um, yeah, it's getting too long, so I'm going to let you all go. Thanks for watching. Um, subscribe, come back, check me out. Ta-ta.